Hey, hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I want to say a few words about the drama surrounding the launch of Last Epoch. It applies to Hell Rivers 2 too, but I'll refer to Last Epoch. The game was released a few weeks ago, but I was too busy playing and making videos about Hell Rivers. However, I'm a big fan of the game since before it became a big thing. Guys, listen. The gaming industry is like housing in a way. Would you buy a flipped house in which the owner cut corners at plumbing and all sorts of materials or buy a good house made by people that actually give a f Everyone was yapping about the server issues of this game. It seems it's a common trend this year. I understand it can be frustrating, but don't buy games on day one, especially if they are online. Give them a week or two, or buy them but expect these kind of things. My first characters are in offline mode of course, and solo self found with Circle of Fortune faction. What bothers me about the reviews on Steam is the fact that some of the games getting negative reviews to hell and back are not deserving of it. I have nothing to gain from these developers, I have nothing to gain from any video I make actually, and I only hope to talk reason into some people. Having a different opinion is anyone's right. But as people who thumb down a great product are entitled to their opinion, so am I. And I choose to voice it this way. What bothers me is the known fact that people are not changing their reviews after these temporary issues are fixed. Because let's face it, one way or another, they always get fixed. So good games like Helldivers 2 and Last Epoch suffer from it. Now, the issue kinda fix itself in the meantime because negative reviews got buried by positive ones after devs made the servers work. And the second thing is the reviews talking about connection issues are not reflected by the quality of the games. Both games are great, when they work that is. And Last Epoch even has an offline mode, I mean, I don't want to tell you how to play your games, but man, do the first playthrough offline like I am. I know it sucks, but you know these issues will get fixed. It's not like Overwatch 2 where you might hate the monetization or the fact that Blizzard lied to you, and you know they will never add PvE or change the monetization, ever. And on top of it, these games didn't charge you 70 bucks. And don't get me started about Call of Duty, which is a disgrace, a ripoff of a game that is not worth 10 bucks in my opinion, if you have the last year's iteration. And these games are making hundreds of millions, even billions of dollars each year. Diablo 4 just added one of the delayed features of this season, the Gauntlet Dungeon. And people are not impressed by it. Blizzard will not win back the players that stop playing their game with these kinds of updates. And yet, at lunch, their game sold like there is no tomorrow. And after all, that's all that matters. Helldivers 2 and Last Epoch are not like that. This is why I say they don't deserve all the heat they get. They come from smaller studios that didn't really expect to get so many players. I say they are small compared with the ones I already mentioned that have thousands. Well, in my humble opinion, Last Epoch devs should have expected this, because I clearly saw all the signs a year or so ago. Plus having popular streamers and YouTubers like Asmongold and many others announcing they will play the game at release should instantly make you think about server overload at lunch. So again, we have the right to think whatever we want, but having 13,000 out of the 30,000 reviews negative since the launch, uh, this was a week or so ago when reviews were mixed by the way, over server issues is pretty dumb if you ask me. I don't apply the same logic to everything by the way, so I don't think I'm a hypocrite. If I buy a new car and it's delivered with only 3 wheels and a cracked windshield, I will foam and rage over it, because it makes sense to do so. In that situation, it is unacceptable. But this? When I hear big streamers say it over these games, I'm like, man, what's wrong with people? How is that unacceptable? And why? I mean, if the marketing campaign is disingenuous, or the company use bait and switch tactics, yeah, that shit should be unacceptable. I'd even go as far as saying big companies like Blizzard shouldn't get a free pass when their servers melt at every lunch since, I don't know, forever. My point with this being, we shouldn't hold every company to the same standard and we should give smaller studios that clearly made something cool a chance. Only by doing this we can get rid of the real predators of this industry and get them in line. Dunking on the small guys if they don't deserve it is not helping anyone, the studio that made the game, you or me. 
So venting the frustration on everyone without discrimination when a game launch goes to shit is counterproductive in these cases. Last Epoch is a game that did almost everything right, but multiplayer code or I don't know what. At least Path of Exile was worse, and Diablo 4, well, <laughs> you know how Diablo 4 is. A shiny thing, but empty inside. These devs tried their best, and if they keep this up, grinding gear games need to get ready to fight for our time. Diablo is knockout in the first round. Will it come back? I really doubt it, but do I want it to come back? Sure, it's Diablo after all, but I have no faith in Blizzard lately. Profit-driven companies are doing things in detriment to their players, while the small companies need to prove themselves worthy of our time and money. Watch who you entrust the time and money with. Since the release, I did two characters in offline mode because I don't care about online, and had a blast playing them. I can't say the same about Diablo 4. After I was done with the campaign, my enjoyment with that game went to shit faster than a Formula 1 car. This one does so many things right, things that players want, it's almost unreal. From small quality of life features to an all around satisfying gameplay experience. Let me elaborate a bit because for everything that annoys me in Last Epoch there are at least two that annoy me in Diablo. In Last Epoch it annoys me greatly when I have some window in focus, say crafting window, but I move when I try to scroll by holding the bar with the mouse button pressed. I don't know if that makes any sense, but anyway, that drives me nuts. But then the entire Diablo 4 crafting system is dog poop. And the stats in that game are as inspired as a movie script that was written by AI. Plus 2 damage to slowed enemies on a Friday night comes to mind. The only thing Diablo 4 beats last epoch in my opinion is the level of polish. So it's a polish that versus an actual good game. Diablo 4 only proves that if you throw enough money and development time into a third, you make it shine brighter than the space station. And to people who keep saying the endgame is lacking, well, shit bro, it, it is lacking, of course, compare it with any vanilla ARPG you love, not ones that are in game evolution for 10 years. But seeing how the developers innovated in different areas of the game, I'm sure they will do great things with the endgame in a few seasons, I, I mean cycles. And let's go to Diablo 4 again for a minute. That game is in the third season, I think, and its endgame is still lacking. They added a few endgame bosses, rebalanced things here and there, and now they added the long-awaited and promised dungeon, the gauntlet. This last one is not received very well by fans, or so I hear. I feel zero incentive to go play that game, and I'm a big RPG and Diablo fan. I'll bet my left nut that by the third cycle, Last Epoch will have significant additions to its endgame that will add more cool stuff than Diablo 4 will add until the end of this year. We as players need to recognize value when we see it, and reward it accordingly. Not castrating smaller studios, because they are the only hope of this industry by this point. I haven't seen 800% value in Blizzard games since StarCraft 2. Diablo Immoral, uh, I mean, that shit doesn't count, right? If you are one of the guys who changed the review after things get fixed, this video is only partially addressed to you, so kudos for being an awesome human being. I usually stay away from dramas and focus on reviews and playthroughs, but from time to time I'll post a video like this. In the next videos I might go over what's new into the game since I reviewed last epoch, less than, I don't know, two months ago, before everyone jumped on it. Everything said there should be still relevant, so go watch it if you're curious. If you found my rant or think this video might be useful or thought-provoking to someone you know, leave a like and share the video. If you don't agree with something, let me know in the comments. I read them all and I'm always open to discussion. And sometimes I even change my mind. And this is pretty much it. Until next time, take care and see ya.